reach Monster 911, and I'm Lance Hightower. I've been taking cryptid emergency calls for over five years. If you have a cryptid emergency, please call our toll-free number, 866-306-8085. I can help you. What's your emergency? Hey, guys. So I wanted to film again. This is the last hoorah for the 2019 deer season. Uh, instead of camping this uh, where we normally go, um, deer season as far as still going, but rifle season's over, and all the firing, all the shooting, and all that has calmed down. It is 32 degrees today. It's wet. It rained all night. It's damp. We had uh, ice in Tulsa, sleet. So I'm down here at Three Rivers Wildlife Management, and I suspect there's nobody down here. I dropped my son off with my dad. My dad's down. We got a cabin, and so my dad's just cooking. My son doesn't, uh, he didn't have a stand or anything, so he really didn't want to hunt, so he's just keeping my dad company. Now my brother, one of my brothers that, uh, that lives in Dallas, he, uh, He's out here already. He's going to break off the stand about 2 o'clock. It's coming up. Uh, it's about 1.30, so in 30 minutes, maybe an hour. But everything has calmed down, so archery season will still go here in Oklahoma till about the 15th of January. But we like to come back out because the deer will move again. You don't have all people running. The, you don't have people running all these dogs. You don't have gunfire going off every 30 minutes. Even though this is a vast, very large, dense area, there's still a lot of people driving these roads. And we don't drive the roads. We actually, I have my deer stand out here locked up on a tree. It's a tree climber. And my brother had his. I think he's got two out here. So, we're, uh, I'm heading out there. We left out, my son and I left this morning from Tulsa, and so I'm going to put some uh, refresh in the area up with all this rain, got some deer lure out there on a mock scrape, and who knows, I mean, with all that being said, you never know what you'll find out here. I mean, just like anything wild out here, as soon as the activity of humans kind of leave out of the area sorry there's a lot of rocks here in this road uh, as soon as the human activity leaves everything wildlife picks back up the activity starts to go up a little bit so there's no telling what I'll see out here yeah I'm almost there here's what it looks like here So, I mean, I'm going by myself. My brother's out here. He's, he's about an eighth of a mile from me. So he's gonna pass my truck when he leaves out and I'll stay in the stand till about 4.30 and then I'll leave out. So I'll be by myself for a while down here. And so you can imagine, you know, we've mentioned this a couple times and maybe you've been on a couple sites, but the people, the hunters that really have the encounters, the Bigfoot and Dogman encounters and other types of creature encounters are typically bow hunters because bow hunters have to typically go deep. I'm always looking for prints, by the way, on the side of the road out here on the corner. It just rained, so this would be perfect to look for prints. And I'm always looking ahead to see if anything around a curve. Curves are usually where you see a lot of road encounters, highways or dirt roads around a curve. But, and I'm always scanning off in the tree to see if something is just looking at me standing. But uh, bow hunters tend to have the most encounters because they have to go deep in the trees or usually by themselves. We talked about this numerous times. 
they usually don't carry a firearm but I do I've got my 500 and you just want to be aware of your surroundings more than anything you know if something doesn't feel right then it's not right and so you just take your time you don't rush getting out to the stand and just be aware of your surroundings just a bit more than just going out there going right to the stand I stop I listen I walk a little bit I stop I listen I'm always looking around not that I'm paranoid I'm just trying to pay attention to my environment a little bit more so I've been out here enough times that there's there's moments where it's silent you know but I, I don't feel a, an odd vibe or anything like that I haven't felt one being out here yet really usually it's been down in camp but uh, that camp uh, that whole side got uh, cut down so really couldn't camp there but we camped this year at another place of course but uh, but anyway I'm almost there I'm coming up on that corner I can see these tracks these are my brother's tracks I'm sure there's nobody out of here I I can suspect there's just nobody out here it's a beautiful country it's an overcast day it's 32 degrees so you can see kind of how open the country is when you get on a hill mountain here Oklahoma these are mountains to some people they would be hills but okay here's my corner okay I'm gonna go ahead and once I get down here I need to get dressed and get all my paraphernalia on it takes a while just to get out to the tree gotta get my safety harness on and once I get everything on, I get up in the tree, then I'll turn everything back on and I'll be whispering and kind of show you again. It's the same tree stand I was in and it's a little, it's not too rugged here, but this is where a lot of the deer are bedded over here. This is new growth. This is the road my brother's on down here. He's parked, he's going to be parked a little further down than I am. got a little limb right there to identify where I walk in at and so I'm back this way here just a little bit so I'll shut this off for now I'll repark and I'll turn this back on once I get in the stand okay so I'm just starting my climb in the stand and there's my gear and everything right there and I've got to go up there you can't see it right there is my hanger and my safety so like I said it's a workout so I'll take my time when I get up there I'll film again okay I finally made it to my tree and I've got everything set up. My bow, my bag back behind me and everything. So I'm about 15, 20 yards from the ground. The foliage is off a lot more than when I previously showed you some of the footage. So it's right out coming up a little after 2 p.m. on the 16th of December. I'm going to sit in this tree maybe for another two and a half hours and see what we get. My brother is going to come by. There's a road back there. He's going to drive by and go on going to camp. He got up here and he was here at 7 a.m. So he's probably a little cold. So we're going to see what gives. And if I get anything, I'll let you guys know. Or if I see anything, I'll let you guys know. When he leaves, I'm by myself up here. There's nobody here. There's nobody here but me. So 
We'll talk to you guys here in bed. Okay. So it's about 3.15 and the wind has died down. It's really quiet. The temperature is hanging around 29 degrees or so. And uh, it iced today in Tulsa when I left down here. It's damp. The wind was really blowing. I'm about 25 feet up in the air. The wind is coming out of the north, which is that direction. And uh, my brother, like I said, he just left. So I'm the only one out here. Uh, if I don't really hear anything as far as any deer sign, I may get around and do some scouting, look for tracks, not deer tracks either. I'm going to go down to the old campsite where we used to have some activity, and I'm going to look. This is the best time to look for any Bigfoot tracks or Dogman tracks because it just rained last night really, really heavy. So, uh, I feel that these Bigfoot, when the hunters move out of the area after rifle season and everything was active now was gone, that this is the best time to either see something, see prints, see breakovers, see breakovers, um, tree structures, and who knows what else. So, it's really quiet right now. The sun is setting. It's overcast. Uh, it's really uh, hazy, foggy. So I'm going to give it maybe another 30 minutes and then I'll bail out of here and then we'll take a look on the ground, see what we can see scouting around. Super quiet here. It's super quiet now. Everything is dying.
see it. You can see it also in the ditch right here is where I packed in. I did a three point turnaround. So I'm gonna get in and I'm gonna be, slow down and turn, start looking in the ditches where there's dirt and on the road and see what we find. I'm gonna shut this off and I'll turn it back on here in a second. Okay, I'm heading out <clears throat> on the road here. I'm driving slow. I've been on the road maybe for about 15 minutes. And I'm just kind of looking in the trees, looking for breakovers, looking here on the ground. This is too rocky right here. Looking, game trails. Also, when you're looking for trees, you're looking for smooth rub marks where something would grab for it to pull itself up. That's the other feature when you have a tree up on a, this is not steep enough here. I can see a lot of game trails, but those are uh, just real small game trails, small, maybe coyotes, bobcat. This ground's really hard out here, but you can see how thick it is. This is all briars. You can't tell, but that's loaded with needles. A uh, human gets in there, you got to hack your way out with a machete. You just can't go walking in here. With the clothing I've got, I'd get stuck. I'd be bogged down. I couldn't get out of that. That's, that's the kind of foliage that is down here. There's places that it opens up, but you can see that a man cannot travel through this very easily at all. And, and they can hide just right here. They can be on the side of the road. And that's why I'm just kind of scanning slowly, driving slowly, looking at the ground. Again, we've got, we're into clay right now. Again, it did rain hard. So I look, I see some deer tracks there. Just a little bit here but I'm looking for major prints where there's a lot of soil, where there'd be a nice print. It's one in a million, but you know, that would be nice. That would be nice. wind is still blowing a little bit but it's not howling like it was earlier it's still cold outside here but uh, at least we don't have some of the freezing temperatures that up north up in the Oklahoma Kansas area has they had snow and ice and I don't think this area got any but it rained my dad said it rained really hard last night so we're coming down into a bottom here and I'll take a look and see what we see in this silt the soil there's a little bit of there's a little bit of a creek right down in here. It's just kind of a low bottom area right here. Take a look here. people say well Lance if these I got asked this question this week and it's always a fair question to ask and to me it's a very logical and simple question to answer and that is how come we see these we don't see that many pictures that many videos uh, clear pictures not not you got to draw it out for me so I can see it I mean, clear pictures, like HD, five feet away, 25 feet away type pictures. And 
I'm going to say the reason why is not everybody is filming. How many people are filming every time they come out like this? Or they got their camera. I mean, I've got my phone right here, but I don't have it going. No one really thinks about it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that? Hang on. What was that? What was that? Okay. I saw a shadow back there, and I didn't know what it was. It was just a lot of pine needles that had clustered in the yoke of a tree. And, but you can see, I'll take, I'll see what I'm looking at out here. Not everybody's running with the camera all the time. And by the time you come up on something that you are stunned in seeing it, the last thing on your mind is typically I need to grab a camera. You think of it after the fact. That's what happens after the fact. Now, you can train yourself over a period of time. I'm not saying you can't, but you can never plan when and where you're going to see these Bigfoot creatures or Dogman creatures. And so you literally have to train yourself on running a GoPro all the time, going down the highway, um, hunting, taking a hike, walking the dog, you name it. And it's one in a million. So that's just my opinion. Um, and you know, it's a, uh, it's you see it and you don't, it's, it's that quick. You know what? I want to drive down here. There's going to be more soil. I see some tracks. Ooh, that wind's cold. I'm going to turn up the heater here a little bit with my windows down. This is how they number these roads out here. 62623. So they've usually it's a five digit number. And there's a little bit more soil out here, so we'll see. And the wind, I can definitely tell the wind is blowing out here when you get out from those trees. Now there's a bit more soil. This right here is a cut. They've cut all these trees down here. I'll just kind of scan the roads. Again, it's rocky. It's got a mixture of rock and clay and silt, but I can see that someone, one car went through here, at least from last night. There might be another person back here hunting. I don't know. There's not too many bow hunters. I'll put it that way. There's a lot more gun hunters during that season than anything. So anyway, that's what I think when it comes. I think some people have gotten lucky in taking a great picture. So on YouTube or other websites, you're going to have to decipher what's good and what's, you know, what's fake, what's a hoax. Um, and, and there's a lot of those. Unfortunately, there's a lot of those. I'm just kind of looking here. I'm looking out here. They've cut all this down here. That wind's picking up quite a bit. Wow went from being quiet where I was at now the winds it's at least 15 miles an hour so I'm gonna take you where our old camp used to be and I haven't been here I couldn't get across on from the from the other side where I have my deer stand you could go down that hill but the problem is that uh, there is a low water bridge there, and if it starts to rain uh, quite a bit, you can't get across. And so that's where we had all the activity for the um, maybe the last three years. Tarps being lifted up on the tent, tent poking, tarp pulling, 
uh, banging on our propane tanks. Uh, this is the camp that we were at when we had those vocalizations, the siren call and the whooping call. Um, so I'm going down here. I don't see any tracks down here, so I'm the first. Um, if it rained day before yesterday, again, archery doesn't really bring in a lot of hunters. So it's really quiet back here. So I'm just kind of looking up ahead, see what I see here. I just want to see if there's any tracks or just what there is, and then I'll back out and then I'll head back to the cabin. This doesn't even look the same. It doesn't even look the same. This was the uphill portion above our camp. And I'm gonna go down here and just see. It's amazing what it looks like when they take all these trees out. doesn't even look the same. It looks like there's a camper down here, so I'm not going to go any further. But, uh, wow, they cut all this. They cut all of this here. Wow. Boy, there's a lot of You know, it, it's it's mind-boggling to me. Yeah, there's a camper there. You can see the camper there, right over there. That uh, you know, there's a few people in here. Then looks like I'm the first to make tracks, though. So. He may have gone out another way. So where he's at, where that guy is at, is where our old camp used to be. And it's not courteous to go in that area and just look around. That's his camp. So, wow, this doesn't even look the same. Well, they've tore, they've got it all cut down. shut it off at here and then tomorrow I'll take some more footage to see if there's anything that I see I've been looking here on the road for any tracks prints uh, I don't see any uh, it's it's my belief that there is a small migration pattern that during deer season these Bigfoot know that hunters are in here and they'll move to an area within this region, and I'm not talking miles and miles and miles, but I don't know, maybe 10, 15 miles, or even 20 miles to another area that's even more remote than hunters, just, it's too thick to get to, so that's just my opinion. And I think once the spring gets here, they move back in, or in the winter, they will come back in slowly, so who knows? Uh, you'll know if there's activity. You'll know.
especially if you're out tenting, you're out camping. And so, all right, I'll uh, I'll get this going for tomorrow, and uh, I'll head back to the cabin. Hey everybody, so this is my last deer hunting day here for 2019. I've got my brother I'm following. He's up ahead. I'll turn it around here. There he is right there. And we got up early. We got up about 5.45. We're out here in Batiste, Oklahoma. Down, uh, it's still down here in Southeast Oklahoma. And we are staying at the treetop cabins right off the Glover River. It's the last natural wild river of Oklahoma. In other words, there's no, uh, there's no um, core conservation out here that dam up the river. Uh, it's a natural free-flowing river. If it floods, it floods. There's no gate control, flood control, and it's a beautiful river, lots of fish, and it was nice getting up this morning with some coffee and watching the otters play in the water. They were fishing out there looking for some uh, early morning breakfast meals. So, but today's the last day. We got sunshine today. Yesterday was overcast, 32. My brother said he got chilled. He'd been out there in the stand until 7 a.m. So we're going out a little bit later. We visited this morning. Some of the conversation revolved around um, really just planning. When you go out, especially by yourself, you really need to think things through. When you're walking in the woods, stop often so you can hear what's going on take a firearm, know how to use it well, have it readily accessible. That's something that we don't talk about. A lot of people will have a sidearm, but they're packing all this, they've got this heavy gear, and if you've got heavy uh, clothing or garments over your firearm, it doesn't work that way. You need to have it on the, I mean, I know this sounds obvious, but you need to have it on the outside of your cold weather gear. So uh, uh, I know some guys will have it, but it'll be so packed deep time. That's, that's not accessibility. You might as well not even carry one for that matter. So have it accessible where you can get to it quick. Um, again, not being paranoid, just planning. We were talking about this morning at breakfast, and I know I've kind of drilled this in the ground a number of times. We were talking about feral dogs, and I didn't realize my brother Laird had encountered some feral dogs back when he was in Norman, down Lake Thunderbird area, and he had a pack of seven dogs, he said. He was out walking down a trail, and he saw them coming, and it was the, the alpha male was a chow. And then it was a variety of breeds, wiener dogs, and uh, just a, a mixture of mutts, and he said, luckily, he was behind a tree and hopefully they'd walk off but one, the child looked at him and then bolted and took out uh, and then the rest of them got scared and took off but that was a, a case where those dogs didn't feel too emboldened they, they, they just bolted and left him so he didn't have to fire his firearm and that's what I would do if you know if you, you don't be out to pick a fight but uh, you know it happens it can happen out here remote areas it can happen in uh, city parks. I say city parks. Parks that are on the outskirts of a city or a suburb. Um, but it happens everywhere. So just be aware of uh, what's the possibility of encountering wildlife that doesn't, that's not afraid of you. Mountain lions, bears, things like that. So really just have a backup plan and then have accessibility to your firearm. Uh, things like that. I mean, again, it sounds obvious, but I'm just talking about this because sometimes the obvious is not talked about. So, but anyway, we're heading out and I'm going to get my tree stand for the one last hurrah. I think my brother's going to change his tree stand, move to another location. I may stay out today till, oh, four and then I'll pack up, take my stand off the tree and then uh, put it on top then head where he's at and park right there and just idle wait for him see if he needs help and then uh, this will be the last that I uh, hunt for this year and still no deer yet so the season still goes on to January 15th so I may go local somewhere around Tulsa but 
it's been fun. It's been a great year, you know, great year for just being with the family and being with my brothers. But it would be nice to get a meat deer this year before it's totally gone. But, um, but anyway, it's a beautiful day down here. We slept well last night in the cabin. Uh, the cabin. Yeah, my brother's pointing at a deer. There's a there's a deer right there off the side of the road. That's where he saw the dogs eating on the deer. Uh, looks like they had their way with it. There's just domestic dogs eating on a deer the other day, and he wanted to know what the dogs were eating. So, but uh, so anyway, I just wanted to fill in this morning what's going on, and once I get the stand, I'll go ahead and uh, fill you in some more here. But. Uh, I looked for tracks yesterday, any type of uh, canine prints or Bigfoot tracks on the roads. I didn't see any at all. And who knows? You know, they're they're smart. Uh, if you get lucky, you might get a print. He, he's signaling that he wants to talk here. Okay, I got you. kids up and down these highways too coming and going as we uh, are down here putting stands up through the year okay so I got down my tree I was way up there and uh, you got an inchworm down right now it's about 2 45 close to 3 o'clock I'm gonna go ahead and get my dripper and get on my stand. I'm going to be quiet still because my brother's still hunting. He's about 300 yards right through here on this slope. It slopes down just a little bit. He's about 300 yards this direction. So here was the original scrape right here. You can see this depression and here's the lake branch right here. So this is the original. My mock scrape was right here. We made this one. We cut everything down. So nothing's been nothing's been in here really. So I'm gonna take this down here and I'm gonna try to we'll single hand it. So squirt it a little bit. I'll put this in a plastic baggie. So see any more rubs in this area.
back to my car. And then what I'm going to do is take my stand, take everything down, load it on top. And by that time, it'll be about 3, 3.15, 3.30, 3.40, 3 something like that. Then it'll be time to go back to the cabin and have some supper. <laughs> interviews. 
Moves in 3.